So you'll have to excuse the mess. I'm just packing up for a wild camp this weekend and I've got a new sleep mat that I need to have a look at before I chuck it in my rucksack. And I thought I'd bring you along to have a first look. It's one of these new Exped Ultra mats and they're available in different R ratings, different sizes and different shapes. So you can have regular, large, standard or wide and then a rectangular shape or a mummy shaped one. I've gone all out and bought a 5R version of the large and wide rectangular one. It's probably overkill, but on my last wild camp where I used the budget gear, I had a really big rectangular sleep mat, which was the same size as this, and I had a really good night's sleep. I think as a side sleeper, the mummy shaped mats just aren't for me because my feet keep falling off one side or the other. The rectangular ones just seem better for the way that I sleep. So this specific one weighs in at 700 grams, so it's not the lightest, but it's got loads of insulation. It's good for anything down to minus 20, so I can use that all year round, and it means that I don't need any extra foil mats or any extra insulation or anything like that. The other versions in this ultra range start at just 316 grams for the 1R mummy shaped one. So you can choose the size, shape, and weight that best suits you. They're not cheap either. I paid just short of 150 pound for this one. But if there's one area that I'd recommend investing more money in, if you can, it's your sleep mat, because you can't put a price on a good night's sleep. And I'm expecting to use this one on hopefully all of my camps for at least the next few years. So it is something that I don't mind investing a little bit more in. I find as well that an insulated mat like this means that you can get away with usually a smaller or cheaper sleeping bag or quilt. And like I said before, you don't need an extra foil mat to put under it or any extra insulation. So I'd recommend when you're looking at things like that, look at the cost of your whole kit and what impact something like this would have on the rest of it, rather than just looking at every single item in isolation. All right, let's have a look. So it just comes in a bag wrapped in this cardboard. So we'll take that off. The bag feels a little bit bigger than it needs to be. It feels like it will compress down smaller than that. But the pack size is 27 by 11.5 centimeters. So it's got a little pocket on the inside. That's got your repair kit and some instructions in there. So that's one thing hopefully we won't need to use. It comes with a pump sack and then obviously you've got the mat itself. Comes in this dead stealth lime green colour. We've got two valves here, an in valve and an out valve, and then a little tag or toggle to be able to pull that valve a bit easier. Now the mat's made from 20D ripstop polyester and is recycled. So Xpad are doing a lot around sustainability and recycling materials and things like that. So I believe they're carbon neutral manufacturers now. And like I say, this is made from recycled materials. And it comes with a five year warranty as well. And I'm hoping I can clear enough space in here to show you it. So like I said, there's two, I don't know what you call it, valves or nozzles on here, an in one and an out one. So we're gonna connect the pump sack in a second to the in one and get this inflated. It's a really decent sized pump sack. They call it the schnozzle or snozzle. You just pull the end off and it clips on to that valve there. It has got a clip on the top here as well. So you can use it to store things, use it as a dry bag. So that took just four full sacks of air to pump it up. Didn't take much time at all. So you can see, hopefully, it's seven centimeters thick. And with the X-Ped mats, the two beams at either side are slightly higher than the middle ones, and that's to stop you rolling off. So I'm five foot 11. If I put the top of my head sort of level-ish with the top of the mat, I've probably got an inch above my head there. If I spin the camera and show you, I've got plenty of room. I can probably just about touch the bottom if I extend my foot out. If I'm sleeping on my side, my hip isn't touching the floor at all, as you would expect, really. In terms of noise, which I know some people care about, it feels or sounds quieter than my Thermarest mat. 
The Thermo S1 feels almost like foil. This is not really making much noise. Let's get it packed away. So we'll flip it over. Valves are at the top and it's the out one that we need now. So I'll open that and then we'll get it rolled back up. So we'll fold it into thirds and then start away from the valve and I usually squeeze a little bit of air out at the bottom so that you can get your first fold and then from there just keep rolling and pushing the air up towards the valve. This is usually where the fun starts when you're trying to get it back in the bag. So it is a good thing that the bag's slightly oversized. So like I said, it's just a first look. I just wanted to make sure that everything was there and there was no holes in it before I take it out for a camp tonight. But the last X-Ped mat I had, the Simmat 7M, served me well. It was the first proper mat that I invested in when I first started wild camping. And I had some great night's sleep on that. So I am looking forward to taking this out and I'll be using it on hopefully, as I said, all of my upcoming camps. So click subscribe if you want to see how this performs over time. And I'll see you in the next one.